Hello, my name is Sid. In this video I will be showing you how to make your cars look exactly the way you like in Forza Horizon 3. First and foremost, this can only be done on Opus Dev on the PC. You cannot play Opus Dev online or use your existing Xbox Live account. For these mods, the tools you will need are SQLite Database Browser, which is linked in the description, and your favourite WinZip Archive creating program. I highly recommend you use Notepad to type down all the information you want to remember. I use Notepad a lot. The car I've chosen is the S14, as it has a lot of options in terms of modifying and introduces more references in the game database than most other cars. I'll be changing the camber, the ride height, wheel offsets, tyre widths and tyre aspects, maximum steering angle and enabling the wide body mix bumper glitch that has been patched. I'll also show you how to make the manufacturer wheels of any car available in the upgrade store. Starting off, we have to get some information from the car before changing it. We're going to be lowering the car to my preference so I can tell how much I need to edit the values by. And I'll also be putting on the wide body. We're in photo mode so we can tell how much we need to increase the offset. This looks pretty good but when we put on some camber it's going to make the top of the wheels stick in a little bit further so we might bring it out just a touch. I'm thinking I'll only have to bring it out by 0.01. I don't actually mind the ride height of this car so much. I'll show you how to do it but I won't be lowering it much further than this. This is fine by me. Most of the stock manufacturer wheels I like have already been converted but I have left out the Audi Sport Quattro S1. I think these wheels would look nice on the S14 so I'll convert them and show you how that's done. The game database is in the media DB. I've got backups. Always make backups when you're changing things like this. We go to the browse data tab and the first thing we need to do is we need to go down to car data I think it is. Data car. And here we go to media name contains Sylvia. We have a few options. Our Sylvia was made in 1994. So we go here and the number one we need to remember is 440. So we'll type that into notepad. The first thing you're going to change is the camber. But that isn't in the game database. We need to browse to media physics and then open physics settings.ini we need to search for tune camber and here we have the two different values I've already got mine set to minus 20 and maximum 20 we can save that and that's all we need to do this applies over all of the cars once it's done it doesn't need to be done again to edit the suspension we need to go to list spring damper physics now we can't search for the number in the ID, so we need to scroll down to it manually. My car is 440, so we scroll down to there. Each car has 10 different settings, 2 for the stock suspension and 8 for the upgraded suspension. I'm going to be changing the rally suspension, so I'll be choosing the number that ends with 4. I'm going to adjust the minimum ride height to 1100. Now because it's this low, I also need to change the max compression height. So we'll make that about 0 0.09. Now we scroll down to the car ID followed by a 1, followed by a number 4. The 1 stands for rear wheels whereas the 0 stands for the front wheels. We'll also change this to 1100 and change this to 0 0.09. Next is the wheel offset which is found in data car body. We need to scroll down to our number. As you can see there's two numbers for my car ID. The one with the zero at the end indicates that it doesn't have a wide body and the ID with the one indicates the car with the wide body. We then go across to model front track out and model rear track out. We'll be changing these values by 0.01. And 
and that's the offset done. Next is the tire width which is found in list upgrade car body tire width front and rear. Because I like the tire widths on the S14 already I won't be changing that but I'll do a bit of an extreme example. For the S14 there are going to be a lot of numbers that you can change. Under car body ID we would have several of them ending in one. This is to indicate the car with the wide body on it. So we'll choose 104 front tire width and we'll change that to 355 which is pretty wide for a front wheel but we won't be using that in the final tune. For tire aspect we go back into data car and scroll down to our car ID. Here we go across to the front tire aspect. This doesn't usually need to be changed beyond values of 5. I don't think I need to reduce the size that much so I'm going to make it to 50 for the front and 50 as well for the rear. What this does is changes the overall diameter of the tyre. While we're still in the data car table, we can also edit the max steering angle of the car. Most cars come with 42 degrees and Horizon Edition cars come with 50 degrees. For this car, I'm going to go a full 10 degrees further and push it to 52. Now to enable the normal bumpers on the wide body, we need to go into list upgrade car body, front bumper, rear bumper and side skirt. We'll see our car ID followed by three numbers, each representing which body kit is applied to the car. One of them is of course going to be the wide body kit, so under car body ID it will be followed by the one. So to enable this for all of the bumpers, we're going to change the car body ID to be applied to the number one. There's probably a more professional way of doing this because once you do this, the regular bumpers won't be available on the car without the wide body. But I figure once you've gone to the wide body, why would you go back? The one we leave out is going to be the stock bumper because if the regular car doesn't have any options for it, it's going to crash the game. Save that and then we head into rear bumper and repeat. Enabling the manufacturer wheels for purchase is the most difficult part of this tutorial. We need to go to list wheels and under media name we search for the car that we chose earlier, which is the Audi. We can do that by just typing AUD for Audi. And we scroll down to the Sport Quattro 86. The ID for this wheel is here and so we need to type that in so we remember that for later. What we do here is we give the wheel a name, this can be anything you like. Um, part manufacturer, this can be any number, 200 is a good one, I believe it's Motegi Racing. We need to give it a price so it appears in the menu. Is stock, we need to change this to zero. And in type, we can type street. I don't know if this is fundamental for the wheel working or not, but it's worked so far, so we'll just keep doing it I guess. Two more tables we need to edit are wheel categories and wheel annotations. In categories we need to add a line that all the manufacturer wheels will be put into. We give it an ID 5, is stock 0, display it of 5, and the name, description, icon path and image path can all be copied from either of the ones above it. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be the last one in the list. Then we go to wheel annotations, scroll to the bottom, Add new record. Under wheel ID we use the ID that was in the wheels list. Category ID of 5 and display order of whatever number was before it add 100. So in my case it's going to be 15,000. And here we can save. That's all the work we need to do in the database browser so we can close that now. To complete the wheels we need to go to media, cars, and scroll to our Audi. We also need to create a new zip somewhere with the same name that the Audi uses. What we need to do is go into Scene, Wheels, and we can directly copy this into here. 
Now what we need to do is create a new folder called textures. In that folder, create a folder called AO. And here is where we'll be copying the textures for the wheel into. In the car file, go to textures, AO. And here we can see the wheel LF AO swatch bin. We copy this into here. And that's all we need to do to enable the wheel in the menu. We can close out of that. Now in the cars folder, we go to library, scene, wheels, and we drag the new Audi Sport wheel zip into the folder. And that should be all that we need to do for it to work. You'll find that some cars like the Metro 6R4 uses two wheel models for the stock wheels. One for the front and one for the rear. The rear generally has more dish and that's usually the one I use. So to use this, I put this into the new zip folder on the desktop and rename it to LF. The same is also done with the swatch bin file. You copy that over but rename it to LF in the new zip before copying it into the wheels folder. In other cases like the Countach you'll find that there are no specific wheel textures for the car. To resolve this I just copy all of these swatch bin files into the new wheel zip file. Sometimes it overcomes it, sometimes it don't. It's really kind of a luck sort of thing. Now that everything's done we can launch Opus Dev and see what the new car looks like. So here we can see that the car is way lower. This is because the slider of the suspension tune stays in the one place but the number increases or decreases according to how you change the file. So now we can go into the upgrade menu and start changing things ordinarily. Here we can see that we've got the wide body on but we're able to change the bumper to the ones that we prefer. Now we go into wheels, choose the rims. Here we have our stock rim style. And here are all the rims that I've chosen. But the Audis are at the end. Here we have the tyre widths. They go up normally. And then the one we changed is way wider. Can't really see it so... And the rest of the upgrades are pretty straightforward. Now we can start tuning the car to make it look a bit better on these new wheel settings. And we'll give that a look. Yeah, that's sitting pretty nicely. You can also see that the steering angle is much greater. So I'm going to get used to this car for a bit and do some drifts.
So that's a pretty basic overview of what's possible inside the game database file. You can change all sorts of things like engine power curves, which engines can be swapped into which cars. It's really up to you, you just need to have a look through the database and find out which parts do what. All a bit of trial and error. As a bonus I'll be throwing in this text file which has all the lists of names and references that I was changing in this video. Hopefully that comes in more handy than pausing a video every now and then. So yeah, happy modding.